When you open this template, two spreadsheets will appear. The first is the process failure modes and effects analysis, which predicts and prevents problems in a process. This is exactly like the error modes and effects analysis. The second worksheet is the failure modes and effects analysis for parts. Again, the template is exactly the same. However, the first column is for the part as opposed to the process step. In this in instance, you would indicate the part in your first column. This might be a tire or a knob on a baby crib. In the next column, you would indicate the manner in which your part could fail. For instance, the tire could blow or the knob on the baby crib could come loose. Indicate the consequences of that failure. It could cause an accident or the knob could be swallowed by a baby. Then you would indicate the potential causes of that failure. Maybe the tire blew because it was worn or the knob came off of the crib because the glue didn't hold. You would next indicate what steps you've taken to prevent that problem and what steps you've taken to detect that problem. The columns in between are your scores. You would indicate, um, first of all, the severity of that consequence. Again, causing an accident or having a baby swallow a knob would be a fairly high severity. You would indicate the likelihood of occurrence and the likelihood of detection. These scores should all be between 1 and 10, and if you scroll down to the bottom of the template, you'll see those sam some sample ratings. Again, for severity, if your severity is low, then you would give it a low score. If you have a high severity, then it would be a 9 or a 10. If your occurrence is remote or low, give it a low score. And if your occurrences are very high, give it a high score. Detection runs the opposite, since the higher the um, likelihood of detection, the lower the risk. So if you have a high probability of detection, give it a low score. If you have a low probability of detection, give it a high score. Multiplying these three numbers together is going to give you your risk priority number. In this template, the higher the risk, the more likely you are to select that item for some kind of action. And that's what the remaining columns are for indicating what your recommended actions are, are that you're taking to either reduce your severity, reduce the occurrence, or increase the likelihood of detection. Indicate who's going to be responsible for that action. And then once you've taken the actions, you'll indicate when you completed them, and then you'll rescore the item. Again, the goal here is to predict any problems that might occur and take, take um, action to reduce the risk. And that's how you use the failure modes and effects analysis in the QI macros.